Liliana Yade, Ambassador, um, currently Civilian Deputy to the Commander at Southern Command. Um, I started right out of uh, college after getting my master's. I was doing some development work with Tulane University and there was the opportunity to work with uh, the United States Agency for International Development as an intern and I started as an intern and there I many many years later here I am. Uh, I went through um, a lot of development work first with USAID and then I was invited by State Department to, to join the state on several positions including uh, uh, two-time ambassador. So here I am. Yeah. So the commander has two deputies. One is a military uh, deputy and the other one is civilian uh, deputy to the commander. I um, have uh, basically two lines of responsibilities. One is uh, provide the commander with foreign policy advice. Um, fortunately I'm I've been working most of my career in the region, so I'm quite familiar with uh, having lived and worked in the region, also have some knowledge of the issues of the region, so I'm able to provide him with some insights, and uh, everything we do in the command is within the uh, foreign policy framework uh, so uh, to ensure consistency, so that's one part of, of my job. Uh, the other part is I, I oversee some special offices, including the Human Rights Office, uh, the Public Affairs Office, and the Strategic Communication. So those are um, three, um, uh, three teams that, that provide some very specialized inputs to the, to the command. Yes, my studies were f focused on, uh, on the region, um, even though I started in Asia, um, and as a Foreign Service Officer, you have worldwide availability. So I did uh, get posted in Bangladesh, but my language um, abilities, my experience, and just my, uh, my, I was constantly being pulled into the region because um, I, I'm familiarity with the issues and so forth. So I ended up um, by choice and opportunities being pulled into this region. Was good. Uh, you think you have a typical day and you look at your agenda and you have certain meetings that are uh, regular, but nothing is typical. And I think uh, the um, disasters that occurred as a result of the hurricane demonstrated that every day was very different. Um, certainly, we wouldn't have expected to have had those hurricanes back to back. And one of the uh, big responsibilities of of this command is, is in disaster, humanitarian assistance and, and disaster re, uh, response. So uh, we ended up doing things that, you know, our days were really unpredictable because it was hard to tell what the next uh, demand was going to be for the, the response that the command uh, presents. So I, and if it's not the disaster, it's something else. So, so even though we have some set uh, meetings to make sure there's coordination, uh, within the command uh, uh, and among the, uh, so we have, for instance, for, foreign policy advisors uh, that are uh, uh, from state that are placed in different um, uh, directorates uh, within uh, Southcom and the different component. Um, uh, so in Army South, uh, Air, Force, uh, Air Force South, and so forth. And so we want to keep consistency, so I have to uh, regularly um, speak with them, or, or um, we do um, uh, video t conferences to just to make sure that we're all um, have the same messages. And so there's cer certain meetings like that that happen regularly. But my day, I would say, is uh, not routine. <laughs> and that's part of the fun of the job because you, you never know what's going to be um, happening the next hour. Well, certainly um, it's the front office. So with the military deputy command uh, commander and uh, with the commander himself. So I try to, I mean, I'm servicing him. Uh, and so that's where uh, most of my effort is, is placed. Um, I also do a lot of work in um, coordinating with, for instance, the J-5, which then deals with programs in uh, cooperation with the posts. So my other role is in uh, communicating with the ambassadors and communicating, making sure that everything that is done uh, here is closely coordinated with um, 
uh, with posts in the country teams. So a, a lot of my day is also trying to uh, interact and making sure that communication is happening um, and throughout the region. It may be today, maybe a focus on one of the Central American countries. Tomorrow it may be Colombia. The next day it may be, you know, Chile. So um, uh, that's what makes it fun and you know, interesting. So I think my strengths are in the fact of having served as U.S. ambassador twice um, in a small post such as Paraguay, uh, where I served in, um, from 2008 to 2011, and in Brazil, uh, which is a very large post, uh, from um, 2013 to, to uh, I left in January of this year. Uh, which is a very different post because we've got different consulates and um, uh, we're spread out and certainly a, a country team that is made up of uh, over 12 different U.S. government agencies. So I think that what I bring to the table is the familiarity with how things happen uh, within embassies and the interagency coordination and communication. And so um, my insights into how a certain idea or effort will be received or best coordinated at post. That's where I can be helpful. Uh, whether there's a bottleneck of something not, uh, a program not being able to be uh, properly understood or the implications of the benefits of, of, of a certain uh, type of uh, cooperation or what it entails in uh, what we need from the different countries in terms of exercises and so forth. So facilitating that communication with the country team and the ambassador is where I think I can be helpful. Um, and in, in most of the cases, uh, these are my colleagues. I know them. I can pick up the phone and call and, and try to uh, deconflict issues or facilitate uh, the communication. So I think that that's, um, that's an area. The other is uh, familiarity with the issues. And so there are all the nuances, um, differences between countries, um, having served in, in, in most of the region. Um, I think, I believe I've been in every country and maybe um, with the exception of a of a couple of, of island states uh, in the Caribbean where I've not had the opportunity to visit. But other than that, um, I'm quite familiar with the differences and with this, in, in what, what issues kind of unifies the region. And so that, uh, that's another area where I think I can be helpful in, in providing that uh, context for how issues can be um, uh, best um, shaped and, and, and um, making sure that we are successful in our efforts. Uh, so I would say that those would be the strengths in the areas where I feel familiar with um, and um, my outreach to, to other agencies having, in a way, I'm kind of in a hybrid because I come from USAID, but I'm a really a state person here, and now I'm in the Department of Defense. So I mix the development, um, diplomacy, and defense um, context. And so that's another, I think, another plus to be able to bring, um, and that's the way the world is. It's not, um, you know, stovepiped and, um, uh, black and white, but rather there's all these mixtures and, and, and mixes. So the, the fact that I kind of represent that interagency, um, I think is, is, is a plus.